I would like to talk about five common mistakes people make when they are building economic models. And this video is just an overview of the five mistakes and then I'm going to post separately a video that sort of goes through an example of each one and how to fix it. But first I want to say why do you need to learn these common mistakes that I see when students build their own models? And the reason for this is if you want to actually use economic modeling in a powerful way to sort of develop your thinking and think carefully through problems and do the kinds of thought experiments that economic modeling is designed to help us with, then you need to practice actually building your own model. And I generally recommend that students start out by building models of just stupid little decisions you make every day. Like, how long do you wait in line at the cafeteria before you go do something else? Or how many friends from high school do you keep up with? Or how many times a month do you call your parents? Just basic decisions that you make every day. Practicing modeling those will get you used to the structure of modeling. And once you've got a handle on that, then you can go on and model more substantial problems. But, um, but I think that's the best way to learn microeconomic modeling, in which case after you've built a potential model, you need to check it for mistakes. So here I have a model, we've got a choice variable, benefit and cost. Uh, the choice variables in both of the benefit and cost functions, and we've got a couple of exogenous variables. So what are the most common mistakes? The absolute most common mistake that students make when they're learning microeconomic theory is to think that they are maximizing their choice variable. And this is a completely understandable mistake because you look at this and the fact that the maximization sign is clustered with the choice variable makes you think you're maximizing your choice variable. That's absolutely wrong. You're not maximizing the choice variable. You're maximizing the objective function by choosing the choice variable. And this will absolutely get you in a ton of trouble if you want to logically understand models. Because if you want to maximize the choice variable, that's really simple. You just set it as high as possible. Like if when I build models of time spent studying, you maximize grades minus opportunity cost sub, uh, by choosing the time you spend studying. Well, if someone reads that as maximizing time spent studying, then you just choose to study 24 seven. And it doesn't really make any sense. That's just not how models are set up. So absolutely banish this kind of thinking from, uh, from your thought as you build models. You never, ever, ever maximize a choice variable. The second common mistake is that you have the wrong sign, plus or minus, on a cost or benefit. And I think you'll probably need to watch the video I do on this to, to fully understand that. But the basic idea is the sign here is just um, going to determine do you like this or not like it. So classically we have a benefit that's a wonderful thing like happiness or money earned or whatever and we have a cost that we don't like such as money we have to pay or things we have to give up um, and that's the classic form. But sometimes you have something where your choice variable by increasing your choice variable that's going to decrease a bad thing. In which case, those are the cases where students will oftentimes get the sign on this wrong. So when you're checking a model, just go through and ask yourself, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And does the sign in front of it match whether this is good or bad? And that will help you fix that mistake. The third mistake that I see a lot in student models is that when they define variables, they'll define the variable as increase in something rather than the thing. And of course that is wrong because increase in, that's associated with the derivative. So if your benefit is health, um, then you want a situation where changing your choice variable will increase this, um, not um, increase and increase in this, right? That's sort of the second derivative rather than the first derivative. So if you're hoping that by exercising more, if exercise is your choice variable, you will get greater health. You just want to define this as your total health 
and this is going to be the thing that contributes to that total health. So you never want to define a variable as increase in health. Uh, and it's easy to fix that one. You just get rid of increase, cross it out, and whatever the thing is, if it's health, that's how you should define your variable. The next common mistake I see in student models is that they'll have a variable that's endogenous. In other words, it's a function of the choice variable. When, if you think about it logically, that variable should be exogenous. And an example of that might be um, if you have something that's like extraversion, that's a feature of a person's personality, it's probably not going to depend on your choice variables. So if a student had a uh, number of parties you attend per month, and uh, they had extraversion as a function of the number of parties that you attend, that doesn't make sense because attending more parties does not make you more extroverted. Extraversion is sort of a fixed personality characteristic. So extraversion should be an exogenous variable that's going to influence something else like joy from partying where this function is going to be higher if you're extroverted. And checking for that, basically when you go through checking a model, you're going to ask, when I increase my choice variable, does this thing change? And if it changes in response to you increasing your choice variable, then it is endogenous, you're good. If you think about it carefully and you realize when you change your choice variable up or down, this would not respond, then that really should not be an endogenous variable, it should be an exogenous variable, and you're going to re need to rearrange the variables in your model. And then the last common mistake is the reverse of that. It's when you have an exogenous variable in your model that really should be endogenous. And this one I almost did not include on the list because sometimes we'll make a variable exogenous, even if it's really endogenous, just to quiet some of the complexity of the model and to simplify and zoom in on one thing that we want to focus on. So it's actually not true that um, every exogenous variable in the model is truly exogenous in the real world. Having an exogenous variable just means you want to play around with that variable in certain ways using comparative statics, and it's not the, the motivational forces that you're focused on. Um, in which case, like, when is this actually a mistake? I think this would be a mistake if you're not doing it intentionally. So if someone looks at your model and they're like, wow, that should be endogenous, why isn't it endogenous? You should have an answer to that question. And if you don't, then you just haven't thought through your model carefully enough. Now the sixth mistake I see commonly in student models is that they have a choice variable that's not something the decision maker that they're modeling can actually choose. And sometimes it's something that nobody actually gets to choose. So when you're building a model, make sure you think about whose perspective is this from, whose decision is the choice variable. So the most common choice variable I see that fits this mistake category is like voter turnout where there's no individual that actually chooses voter turnout. And obviously this, this also falls under the category of number one, um, that's something you want to maximize, but voter turnout is sort of the culmination of a bunch of different people's decisions, where each person is deciding for themselves, do I go vote? So voter turnout is not going to be a viable choice variable, but if you want to model that, you can model something like, um, how much effort am I willing to put forward to vote? So effort is an individual decision, there's actually a choice maker who has control over that. And then the seventh mistake that students make is they'll have a benefit or cost that's fairly unresponsive to the choice variable. Now this is different perhaps than uh, the benefit or cost being an actual exogenous variable. It's really where it's really where the derivative is about equal to zero, which is associated with drop in the bucket problems. So this isn't necessarily wrong. As a matter of fact, it's an important part of modeling when we're modeling collective action problems and 
uh, public goods problems and whatnot. But sometimes students will have just one benefit and just one cost where there's almost no, um, where the elasticity of benefit with respect to the choice variable is almost zero. And the most common place I see this is with recycling models where you're choosing how much to recycle and you're choosing it because by recycling you have a positive impact on the environment. And of course the cost might be effort costs then, but the problem is you kind of know that your personal decision about how much to recycle has almost no impact on the actual environment. Um, now, of course, collectively, everybody's um, collective choice, the, the group's choice about um, how much to recycle, that could have an impact on the environment, but not your one little tiny decision. That's a drop in the bucket. So, of course, you need some other benefit, some other reason people are recycling. This could be social, it could be status, it could be you're not going to be judged by your neighbors. You would need to build in something else that doesn't have an elasticity about equal to zero. So that's just a few common mistakes I see in student models.